Number 1. Joel Miles On August 2, 2017, the police in Sandusky, Ohio received a 911 call. When they got there, they found a man named Anthony Pearson dead in his red truck. People who saw it happen said that a guy argued with Anthony and then killed him. More people later came forward and one of them, Joel Miles, was mentioned several times. Joel was known for being violent and had just finished serving time for trying to murder someone. Before the police could talk to Joel, he called them first. He said he knew they thought he might be the one who did it and he wanted to tell them where he was when it happened. He said he was with his fiancée, Amy, at a hotel out of town. The police interviewed Amy, and at first, she tried to lie for Joel, but later she told the truth. When asked why she lied, she said she was scared because Joel threatened her many times. Joel had a big problem because the police had a lot of evidence against him. Plus, his phone record showed he was at the scene when Anthony was killed so they got a warrant to arrest Joel, and he was brought in for questioning. But right from the start, he seemed agitated. Now, nah, nigga, I'm gonna be me now, nigga, because you're lying that piece of shit. You lied to me to get my girl to come down here, bro. Amy ain't got nothing to do with this, bro. I said nothing to talk to you, brother, sir. I gave you my word, bro. You got jumped. You got jumped. I talked to you, bro, and you dog me, nigga. Man. I didn't kill that dude, man. Let's, let's talk about it. Go holler at Elder Bridge and the dudes that was outside, man. Okay. okay. Now, I want my car and I want Amy to get out of jail, man. Amy ain't do nothing, bro. Okay. No reason. Amy ain't got nothing to do no. with this, bro. Y'all got her locked up for what, man? Bring it down. Bring it down. Okay. Relax. Who's you? I'm Detective Witchman. Okay. I was off yesterday. I would have talked to you, but he was there. Okay. Talk to me. Okay. And I can explain some stuff to you. All right. Okay. Are you relaxed now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, let's talk. Him. Let's talk. Lie to do lie to me, man. Okay, we'll talk about that too. What well, Brotherton didn't mm -hmm. lie to you, believe it or not. He did not lie to you. So what my car what my car okay. is? So your car was used and is down in, impounded in our police car right. right right now. Mm -hmm. Um because that was the vehicle you drove away in. Mm -hmm. Okay, that night. So right now your vehicle is impounded because even if you uh would have robbed a gas station or or I didn't kill nobody. nobody. But listen, and I look in your eyes and I see I didn't kill nobody. Even if you were over at another crime and you drove in your vehicle, all right, okay. So my car is part that, of the investigation. The, ex exactly. That's why we have the car. So right now, um, the car is going to be we're doing a search warrant. We're going to go through the car, all right. Process the car, all right. Um, stand procedure, and that car is going to be taken out to the city complex and mm -hmm. it's going to be stored. What's that? Be lies. I kept it real. I can I can see how you you believe that, but I hope by me explaining I asked Brotherson, that. Was my car on the investigation? And Brotherson gave me his word. That's a that's a liar. Brotherson said I asked Brotherson. I said Brotherson, is my car on the investigation? My little sister has my car, and okay. I'm willing to, My little sister's willing to drive down here to get her car and my car. Okay. Brotherson looked me in my eyes and said, No, your car is not under investigation. I was not. At Why that, lie about I that? I was not at that interview. I don't know what was all said. I know I didn't do nothing, so I don't have a problem with Brotherson telling me like your car in the investigation. I'm like Nicole, bring me my car, man. Can we can we talk a little bit about that? You go to the situation. We'll talk about anything okay. you want to talk about. I, I want to. I'm gonna let you know what your rights are. That day I you your rights the other night. I'm gonna let you know what your rights are again. Okay. All right, yeah. I don't want to sign nothing. I did. I know my rights. You understand what your rights are? You don't have to sign anything, but I do want to let you know what your rights are again. I just want to remind you. Before they started questioning Joel, another officer made him think he wouldn't get his car, jewelry, and money back because of the charges against him. Joel is a very angry and violent person, so having a calm and relaxed detective will make him less defensive. Well, I'm I'm not understand what you're at. I'm not going to sign. That's good. That's fine. As long as you're I know it's being recorded, too, so hey, cameraman. It, it, is, it is being recorded. Yes. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, Part of the investigation is uh, um, part of DNA. Okay. Um, uh, and what, but uh, like, oh, man, you get one. Oh, yeah, I know I ain't do nothing. Okay. Say, That's so how I know I ain't do nothing. BCI, the crime lab comes in and they process the truck. Mm -hmm. And what they do is anybody had any contact with the truck at all, um, they they process it for DNA and fingerprints and all that stuff. All right. So we'll get you a copy of your fingerprint card here right. for elimination you said, purposes. You said, you said anybody that had contact with what truck? The truck where the victim was in. All right, there you go. Come on. Okay, so, well, you already got your fingerprints from your process. Yeah, yeah, so we'll get a copy of that. So do you, can I get a copy of your, you can get anything you want. 
I know I ain't do it. Why y'all up here questioning me and putting me in here? Y'all need to be, be y'all need to be out there getting people that's out there. But y'all got me in here and y'all just happy with that. But I'm not gonna help y'all with your investigation. You know what? If we were happy with the investigation, <laughs> I wouldn't be out here. Yeah. We'd be done. Yeah. So it's an ongoing investigation, right? Y'all need to get more people so. to be locked up in here. That's what y'all need to do. I'm well, just who, not gonna who, help y'all. Who else was out there? Now I don't know the guy. I'm from Cleveland, man. I just want to get you been here. So. Yeah, I've been here a long time. I've been here for a minute. Yes. But I'm not gonna do that. We, Tell we, them to bring their stuff in here we, and be we learned about you early on. What you learned about me? I sell a lot of drugs. Have you ever heard anything about me shooting? You heard about me selling drugs. We heard, we heard that you're a pretty tough dude. I am. You did that. I know you are. I am. Very. No, I, I've done my homework. Very. Don't bore nobody. I know that. I've done my homework. Even brother to me. You demand he respect. Lied to me. He doesn't. He, he lied to you, me. you demand respect. Yes, I'm a man. Why would okay. I demand respect? Exactly. Okay. So I didn't um, do that to that man, but it's like everybody, everybody, they said, I got a phone with my female friend. She said, everybody in Sandusky saying Joey like he was superstar. And I ain't even do it, bro. Superstar. And I ain't even do it. But guess what? I'm going to trial. <laughs> okay. And the only reason and that's, that's what's awesome about the United States of America is you have the opportunity to go to trial. But that's then it's like I'm sitting here under a no bond and I'm being charged with murder. Well, it's a pretty good case against you, I can tell you that much right now. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Yeah. So we're going to get all this DNA and stuff out of here. Get breeze. this done with. And... Mm -hmm. Everybody keeps saying it's a strong case against me. So that means basically what y'all telling me is that y'all throwing everything that I'm dating y'all know, and y'all telling me that y'all feel like y'all got y'all victims. So, how, so, what, so what happened out in Willard? So the, the mountain that you're going to be climbing right now is okay. that is that, that you're inside of here, mm -hmm. okay? And I gotta be straight up with you, All right. okay? Everything that we have, mm -hmm. okay, um, we have eyewitnesses, All right. okay, more than one. All right, let's go on. Okay, that, that has told us we've had numerous calls, I'm sure Detective Brothers and whoever else talked to you, was it uh, Sergeant Newell, or Lieutenant Newell? You the black guy? Yeah, she's awesome. Um, we, we've had numerous tips, mm -hmm. but Tips are just that. More importantly, is that we have eyewitnesses right. that come. So there, I'm gonna be straight up with you. There's enough right now mm -hmm. for a conviction. I don't care. About okay. That. So the issue that we're gonna have right now is that when Joe Miles is sitting in front of 12 jurors, I, I might go admit to something I didn't do. Okay. Never. When you're in front of 12 jurors, I Joe, I've been to trial before, so I know okay. you looked that up and seen it. Okay. Let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. okay. You got much respect. I'm in front of 12 jurors. And when we explain all the circumstances, you know what that you you know what that picture is going to paint. God didn't do it. The picture is going to paint that you're all over it, okay, and that you did it, and that yeah. you did it very cold blooded, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but there's, and I'm sure that when you were talked to before, that there are circumstances that. Be honest with that, we don't know what that what actually led up to. You I lied to trigger. I lied to Brotherton okay. and told Brotherton that I wasn't in Sandusky because of my fiance. Okay. Well, there's not answers. There's there's not, I'm gonna tell you the story. Brother, that. you sitting up here blowing smoke on my ass I'm and trying to lie to me, man. Cause I'm gonna get irritated about it, man. Okay. Listen so to me. Listen I get off the highway. I came. I left Willard. I can't. I left from seeing Michaela Cook in Willard, like I always see her. I came home, I parked down by the end, down by the end of Parkview. I hit my lick, I drove around the corner, I came back, I parked my car in front of my home. Fuck it, I'm gonna let you know the true story. I parked my car in front of my fucking home after I left and went around the bend and stopped right there to decide if I wanted to leave out the park or if I wanted to go home. Because mind you, I was cheating on my fiance with another woman and I wanted to go back to Willard with Michaela Cook. So I was debating if I wanted to turn on Parkview or if I wanted to leave out the park. So okay. Brotherton told me that I never went that way. That's a damn lie. All this stuff is about drugs, Mr. Arkansas. All this is about because I won't sell them no drugs. So do you know that? So you know that, you know that all this is- no, I know it's about drugs. No, it's, it's all, I'm giving you the truth. Joel mentioned his rights and questioned the DNA investigation, specifically about fingerprints and DNA on the victim's truck. The detective assured him they would provide him with a fingerprint card for elimination. However, Joel's patience waned as he expressed frustration with the ongoing investigation, urging the police to arrest more people. He claimed he was not involved in drug dealing and desired respect and a fair trial. The detective then confronted Joel with the weight of the evidence, which included eyewitnesses and sufficient proof for a conviction. 
Joel, becoming increasingly agitated, maintained his innocence and refused to admit to something he didn't do. The detective stressed that the evidence might paint a negative picture of him, and the true story behind the incident was not yet known. Joel finally admitted to being with his fiance and vented his frustration at being accused of drug-related activities, believing the entire situation revolved around people pressuring him to sell drugs. All of this is steaming because I only sell Josie drugs and Keith. So now I'm gonna give you the truth about what's going on over on Parkview. So the truth is I only serve Josie drugs and I will only serve Keith. I will not serve Audie. I will not serve no one else. And everybody mad at me about that. My house got broken into, they stole 32 grams of dope out of my house. Did y'all know about that? Yeah. They stole 32 grams of D out of my house. Did y'all know that? Who'd you, who'd you hear that did that? I don't know who did it. We heard names. But I don't know who did it. Okay. So now, so now that happened to me. And then prior to that, dudes were riding past watching my home. You heard about that? Did you hear about that? Well, they ain't telling you all. They just giving yeah. you a little bit. Keep dudes going. riding past, staring at my home. And I walk outside to go serve and hit some hit a lick or something. Dudes riding past me, giving me strange looks. Dude stressed at the bottom of my, my car on the back by, the, by, my, uh, by my, my fender, my bumper. I mean, so much stuff going on. But at the end of the day, when I pulled up that night, all the bridges in my car. Can I stand up or would I be being rude? No, stay, 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 stay. You stay seated. You, you stay seated. I ain't going to do nothing nervous. I'm not going to do nothing to you, sir. I'm, talking, I'm talking to you, man. The only I, person I'm mad at is Brotherton. Because I, I feel like Brotherton was dishonest with me about my car and my earrings and my money. Okay. He had his hands on my car like this, just like I told Detective Lieutenant Noel. He had his hands on my car talking to me about dope. Why you gonna sell me no dope? Sell me some dope, man. All it was. All it was. Okay. I said no, man. I'm not sending you no dope, man. F you niggas. I'm tired of you niggas down here. Leave me alone, bro. That's all I ask for is people just to leave me alone, man. I only did I only did with a certain few of people, man. All the bridge kept questioning me, kept asking me, kept asking me. Then some other some dudes walk up to my car, read my plates on my car, man. They tell you that? I heard. Did they tell you that part? I don't know. So some dude woke up on my car, read my plates on my car. It's bothering me, man. I'm not bothering nobody, man. Sure. I'm sitting in my car. All these still talking to me. There's there was two dudes walking to my place, and then all they turned around like, man, leave, man. Leave the alone, bro. So next thing you know, me and Audie in the car talk. I say, you make me feel uncomfortable. Let me get out the car, bro. I get out the car. Me and, me and the dude, me, and, me, Audie, and some other dudes. I don't know their name. It was arguing. I leave. My fiance, Amy was not even present. Okay, I'm following you. So while Amy is involved with this, sues me. I walk back up, I was about to go in my home. But I said, I'm not going in my home, because now I was sorry, so now I was about to go in my home. So now I say, F I go back to my car, next thing you know, that red S, that red truck, speed is the left the scene and speed back around the scene. And everybody want to keep it real, all the breeze want to grab a pistol, the to uh, fat grab a pistol, and another Grab a pistol. And I had my 32, so how can I kill that man? And I ain't had no bullets in my gun. The only time I ever fired that 32, man, was probably four days prior to me buying that 32 in the air, man. That's the only time I ever fired that 32, man. The only time. The only time when I bought that gun, I fired that gun in the air, man. That's the only time I ever fired that gun. The night of that murder, I did not have no bullets in my gun, man. But you can go ahead and tell me the stories that you're hearing or whatever you're hearing, man. You're but here, I'm but here. when I'm sitting up here and I'm trying to give y'all the truth, y'all looking at me like, man, you a lying ass. But I think I'm trying to be honest with you. Like, I didn't kill that man. And secondly, I don't even give a fuck about no one. But Amy, my daughter, and my son, JV, is Aquarius, man. I don't care about no one else. Who my daughter and my son. Mother? But, but my kids? Yeah. I ain't, man, why? Why were my kids involved with this? Well, they were there that night. Yeah, they went to, they, they had, my, kids, my, kids, my kids was with me for, I think my kids were with me for like seven, eight days. My okay. kids were with me for, but I ain't about to let y'all interview no babies. They babies, they're eight or seven years old. They Gloria's kids? Yeah, they Gloria Adams' kids. I'm interview my babies, they babies, man. I'm interview your babies, I'm just wondering who's my, who's, who's the mom? My baby mom name is Gloria Sabrina Adams, man. I had my kids for seven days, man. Amy, man, come on, Amy ain't had nothing to do with none of this, man. I'm telling you, I did not pull the trigger on that man. When I heard that pop noise, I ran and got in my car and sped off. Now, if y'all want to be honest and technical, I know y'all heard all the 911 calls. I know y'all heard like I heard them. Yeah. But y'all run the game on me the same way, like I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, 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 you know, there's a witness that are coming forward. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have witnesses uh -huh. that have gave some phenomenal statements. All right. I'm telling you. All right. Um, because now they don't feel that they're threatened because you're in here now. All right. They feel comfortable talking. So All right. I'm just being straight up with you. All right. So the only question that we have now is self-defense or are you just batshit crazy and you just went nuts and shot? No, I ain't shoot that, man. So that's basically like you said, that's the same thing. No, I'm saying that's the same thing why I got mad at Brotherton, man. Okay. Because you're asking me my story. No. And now I'm being honest and I'm giving you all my story. And I'm even telling you that I was there. I live at 2134 Parkview. We understand. That's where I live at. So it's not against the law for me to be at 2134 Parkview. Not at all. Not at all. But we're just trying to figure out why. Okay, mm -hmm. we already know everything that happened. All right. We've had people that reside there that don't have any involvement in you, don't have any involvement with audience, don't have any involvement with the victim, nothing. Mm -hmm. We have innocent people that are at these houses mm -hmm. that they heard all the arguing, naturally they're gonna go to the doors, they're gonna look out. Mm -hmm. And what do they see? They've seen this man right here, Amy's boyfriend, walk up to the truck and shoot the guy. Okay, <laughs> so you can laugh what you want, and you're going to be silly in front of 12 no, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm talking being serious. I'm not being I'm a, talking man. I'm not being a man. We're, trying to, we're trying to figure out why. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you attended. Maybe that's what you wanted to do. That's you and Tony. If it, did the, did the uh, Tony in the truck, did he have a gun? Oh my God. Did he point a gun at you? Oh, my God. Is this self-defense? I just told you. If it's not self-defense. I told you, man. I did not pull the trigger that night. But at the end of the day, I know you've seen on my jacket, I went to trial before, and I'm going to go again. Because I know I did it. But what I'm saying is this, though. I just told you. I gave you my story. As the detective pressed further, Joel's story underwent a transformation. Initially claiming to have not been involved, he admitted to being present at the scene, but said his gun had no bullets. He maintained his innocence, stressing his devotion to his fiancée, Amy, and their children, suggesting they had no involvement in the crime. Joel concluded by denying any role in the shooting and questioned the police about the 911 calls and witness statements, raising the possibility of self-defense. I told you, okay? I'm telling you that that red truck left the scene. What I want you to do is I want you to get up on that stand and you tell mm -hmm. your story to those 12 jurors mm -hmm. because they're going to look at you just like I am, mm -hmm. not believing you because there's a reason why that trigger was pulled, mm -hmm. Joel. Yeah, I guess I it, it's it's done. You, you can't, we cannot change the past. What we can only do to figure out right now is why this happened. Why would I? I just told why you. Why we have a dead guy? I just told you the, the whole argument. I did. I did. I, I heard that. I just told you, though. Okay. Pull, the only thing that you're forgetting about I didn't pull the trigger. is when that trigger was pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. Okay. But, like you said, you said you got eyewitnesses. But look at this. Remember how y'all locked Amy up for uh, obstruction of justice? justice. Yes, yeah. obstruction of justice, man, basically lying. Yeah, he lied to me. All right. Lied so yeah, what are y'all going to do to the people that wrote y'all these statements? That's all I want to know. What you going to do to the people that wrote you these statements? So I'm going people to that gave me statements? Yeah, the people that wrote you statements that you said so much are now. Well, they're going to be up on the stand and they're going to get cross examined also. All right, by my, yeah, my by attorney. Your... Uh -huh. And by the prosecutor's going to ask some questions and my yeah. attorney is going to ask some questions too. Right, exactly. Right. They're going to get up on stand and mm -hmm. they're going to say exactly what, what they've seen mm -hmm. and what they portray. The picture of Joel Miles is mm -hmm. that you're a ruthless son of a. Mm -hmm. You walked up there and shot him. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. That's what a, the picture is painted. I'm just being straight up with you. I have no reason to lie to you. I'm not in here trying to trick you. I'm just trying to understand the events that led up to it. And I can understand, which I believe you, that Otterbridge had a knife. Because he's under indictment, or about to get indicted right now for a stabbing he did not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Okay? Stand I up. believe that he's got a knife. Okay? Stand I believe up. that other, there's other guns that are out there. Oh, there's a lot okay. of guns out there. Did, did the guy in the red truck have a gun? Mm, I don't know, I really don't know, I can't, I just know that it was guns out there. I'm not a snitch. If I was, like I did some shit the other day when I told Detective Brotherton I was going to tell my brother that was selling me dope. But I ain't no shit. That, that was a sweet nigga shit, so it was guns out there. The I'm only ones that saying there's anything about the yeah. guns were out there, there was guns. they say that you don't know had a gun. I don't know if I necessarily believe that. <laughs> there you go! So they said I had high But I do believe listen. that you pulled the trigger. I know, you do believe it. All the way, I know that you pulled the trigger. You know I pulled the trigger. Yeah. You know that. You 100% sure. I'm 100% sure. All right. Let me, let me 
Yep. Because yeah. of the, because of the witnesses that I talked to, you got to they have nothing to do, mm-hmm. nothing to do with you, nothing to do with the parties out there involved in mm-hmm. it. The witnesses that I have had you shooting Tony. I do in the truck. All right. So they said it's I a wrap. So, so this, 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 this is what I want to know, Mr. 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 Detective. All right. So they said that night, I shot Tony. Yes, you did. There you go. Well, that's how you want me to go forward with the case. All right. Listen, man. Or do you want me to try to understand all the events? I just want to know this. What my earrings and my money? That's all I care about. I mean, you basically telling me like, uh, it's basically what you're telling me in my face is that Mr. Miles, no matter what the fuck you say out your mouth, you black bitch, I don't believe you. Okay. So now that you feel that way towards me, you came here like it was cool with me at first, bro. So now that you feel that way towards me, why are you talking to me then? Joe, that's Joe, Joe did I ever disrespect you? That's basically what, those names. That's basically, no, you won't have to do it. It's not what yeah. you say, it's how you say it. I'm man. giving you enough respect. I don't even need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you enough respect, Joel, mm-hmm. to try to understand because I really don't want to believe that that you're that nuts that you just go up and shoot. No, I, I mean, I, I think since I've been home, I think that there's since I've been home, man, I've been getting money. Y'all ain't had a complaint out of me about nothing, man, about selling dope, man. That's all y'all only complaint y'all had out of me. So it ain't about me being no lunatic to the world, none of that, because I ain't out there going crazy okay. on nobody. Okay. But, if but I know. also know all the details on your East Cleveland shooting. I know all that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have all those records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So not only are you looking at this shooting. Mm-hmm. You're looking at repeat violent no, I don't care about specifications. That. You're looking at, I don't know, about the um, drug trafficking. I'm not sure if they have any buys on you. No. Okay. I they do, I don't give a f. Okay. Well, but that's what I do. I sell dope. Yeah. So well, I go down and do, I will go down and do my time for what I do. You don't understand. Mm. If you get a conviction on this in RVO, I don't, man, listen, I'm so heartless, man. I'm heartless, man. I, ain't, so, I didn't do that to that man. But, but I'm sitting there and I'm, t- I'm a felon. Yeah, I'm a felon. Okay. So, Everybody know I'm a felon. Then I want you to sit on the stand and I want you to say all this. The detective continued to press Joel about the events leading up to the crime. The detective pointed out that Joel would have to testify in court and face a jury who might not believe his story. The focus was on understanding why the shooting occurred and the circumstances surrounding it. Joel reiterated that he did not pull the trigger and questioned the detective's portrayal of him as ruthless referencing past incidents involving Amy and others. He shared his uncertainty about the presence of a gun in the red truck and the weapons at the scene. The detective, however, was convinced that Joel was the one who shot the victim, based on the witnesses they had spoken to. Joel emphasized his concern for his personal belongings and jewelry. He felt that the detective had already formed a negative opinion of him and questioned why they were still talking to him. If they didn't believe him, Joel defended his character and expressed frustration with the situation, asserting that he had not committed the crime. But I did, but because you're showing me right now that you're not a human being, dude. How how, 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 do I have a But you want me to sit in here and admit to you about something I didn't do? No, I want you to tell me what happened out there. I'm telling you that they want, I'm telling you, I told you in the beginning. What they was begging me for, man. They're begging me for dope, man. I'm telling you, man. Okay, you're telling me that I'm not giving you the story. I'm telling you what it's about. All the way up until you're not pulling the trigger. I did not pull the trigger, man. It's about dope, man. I'm, you asked me Good a question. You. Good luck to you. I'm not going to waste my time talking. If you ask me a question, I'm giving I'm you a question. I'm not wasting my time talking to you. If you want to tell me about the last second when you pulled the trigger, if it's not self defense, you show me right now that you're a nutcase, dude. How am I showing you on You're a nutcase. And I'm sitting there printing You're hot headed and you're a nutcase. But I'm, I don't want you to outstand. When you're outstanding and you act that way, Oh man, I'm like, no. listen, cause I'm sitting up here, this is why I'm so irritated, bro. And if you sit, I'll tell you why I'm irritated, bro. Cause I came and I turned myself, I drove myself to y'all. I drove myself to you. Do you know how many people that come down and do that? That trying to clear the conscience, right. trying to convince us that they didn't do it and we have enough facts. Well, I'm coming down. Then I came down, and this is why I get, I, this is what got me so bothered right now. Is that brothers and sisters, this is the only reason I'm mad right now. Is that brothers and sisters in my face and told me that my money, my earrings, and my car was going to be transferred over to him. Your money and your earrings, we have, there's no reason why we need to keep those. All right. None at all. All right. And that's Great. why I'm so high headed. Right? hard. I explain to you why we're keeping it. Now, now you told me. Okay. So now, 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 now I'm cool. And you know what? Detective Rosen is, is fairly new. He may not realize that that car is going to be kept because right. it's, I've, I've been on this job for 27 years now. All right. Okay. He may have not known that that car is going to be confiscated until the case is done because it was used in the commission of a felony. All right. Okay. All right. The only people, are, and I'm talking to you calmly because I don't want you to feel like I'm being this old because I was just being a 
So because when I seen Brotherton, it pissed me the fuck off because he sure. lied to me, man. Well, I felt that Brotherton lied to me and bought my car. And my car is not a it's not it's not a raggedy looking car. It's not a raggedy car. So who wouldn't be upset by an expensive item like that? Sure. I'm being honest with you. So I so now I, I come I in here and I see of course I'm gonna get upset about that. I, I pay I pay I put a lot of money down on that car and I pay my I pay my bills every month. Sure. So of course I'm gonna be upset about my car. That's what my car is. And I pay for my earrings, cash money for my earrings, and I have some money in my pocket. So now I'm being honest with you, and that's why I was so sorry. And I'm going to be all the way. I've been thinking about seeing Brotherton for the last couple of days and just flipping on him about him lying. So I feel like Brotherton lied to me about my car and my earrings and my money. Now, I'm going to come to you. Now, your name is whoever your name is. Wichman. Wichman. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm sorry for the way I talk to you, Wichman. I'm not an asshole type of person, man. I'm a very caring person, man. But one thing that I cannot do, for Rich, Mr. Wichman, I'm going to tell you this. One thing I will not do is admit to something I did not do. Okay. And I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to admit nothing if you I believe in your heart that you didn't do I it. Mean, Mr. Wisdom, well, I'm telling you, it doesn't look good. Mr. Mr. Wisdom, Mr. 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 I'm sitting up here. You even see how the Lord, I just, I just went from being at 10 and I put myself down. You said I'm crazy. I'm not a crazy individual at all. I'm okay. not crazy. I'm a very understandable guy. Okay. And I'm trying to be understandable with you. Okay. Mr. Wisdom, I'm telling you, I did not kill him, but I will tell you this. Everything is stemming from me not selling them dope. Okay. So I'm telling you, I have no reason to dispute about all of this. Is all of this. I'm giving you, you're saying that. all of this, everything that's going on, everything that's stemmed from that this night is, okay. is about this drugs, is, Mr. Richmond. This is the same guy that you got the confrontation at Clips Carry Out mm -hmm. that you pulled a gun on. I never pulled a gun on him at Clips Carry Out. Okay, but you had a gun on you. I pulled up on him at Clips Carry Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And I see, I see how I admit to my wrongdoings. See how I admit to my wrongdoings. Okay, so that stemmed, and then now we got the same guy. Nah, listen, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is the hold same on, guy. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna tell you. This is the same guy. Let me tell you. This is the same guy you're arguing with. Now we got the same guy. Now he's dead. All right. Hmm. You were there. You were there. All right. Okay. Your actions. All right. There's a word that uh, our prosecutor um, uses quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's called consciousness of guilt. All right. Okay. All right. By you ducking and getting the heck out of Dodge. You said, duck, you, you said ducking and doing what? Getting the heck out of Dodge, leaving. Mm -hmm. By Amy grabbing the kids and getting out of Dodge also. All right. Lying to the police. All right. Where that she's never seen you. You guys end up at a hotel or a motel up in Illyria mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, that perception is, holy crap, you need to duck and get out. Okay, there's no reason if you were that if you were that innocent, mm -hmm. why would you not stay at the house? But all right, so I'm anyway, sure. so the eyewitness is there. Okay. okay. Like I said, the only reason why I'm talking to you is to figure out why. And it's very apparent to me I didn't that, know that you don't want to talk about that aspect of it. Everything up to it, you had a gun. I'm not giving you the Mr. Wishman. I'm telling okay. you, I had a gun. I had the little I, we know that. I had my gun, I got caught with Wither on me, man. I had my gun that I got caught with. It. I had that gun in my possession. Okay. Mr. Wishman. Okay. I'm looking in your eyes and I'm telling you, I had that. I had a gun. That. I had that gun in my possession. We know that. I had that gun. Okay. That's all I had on me, Mr. Wishman. That's all I had on me. You telling me in my face that you think. One thing is for sure, Joel is one angry dude. Then the detective continued to press Joel for information about the events leading up to the shooting. Highlighting the eyewitness accounts, Joel maintained that he had a gun, but did not shoot the victim, and expressed his frustration with the situation. I'm lying to you, man. No, you, I believe he had that gun on you. That's what I had on me, man. Okay, and we're also hearing that you had a second gun. I ain't had no two guns. I had one gun on me, man. Okay, we had. We heard you had a second gun too. When I had one gun on me, man, that's a, the little gun I, I okay. always keep on me, man. That's the only gun I had on me, man. Well, witnesses had you like this, man. I ain't do no shit like that, man. I'm I'm dead with what happened, man. I had a little bit. I had a little bitty revolver in my hand, man. That's all I had in my hand. I ain't had nothing else in my hand, man. That's my word. I'm looking in your face and I'm telling you. And then you telling me that you're looking you know at my face and telling me I'm lying. I, I, I get people lying to me. I'm going to try anyway. So I'm so, so. And I'm sorry. For, and I'm so sorry for ever coming to you hostile or being an asshole to you because you ain't do nothing to me. And I'm being out. The only reason I was upset with y'all because I've been sitting in that room for the last two, three days. Like, I thought I'd put this on. And that's all honestly, man. I'm not, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not an asshole. 
Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I am, I do behave when people try to play me or try to disrespect me yeah. or something like that. But at the end of the day, which means I cannot, I will not say, I would not, will not okay. admit to something I did not do. Okay. And I'm just not being a butthead to you, you know okay. what I'm saying? And I'm giving you my I'm word. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sorry for saying. I'm telling you this. I want to try. Good luck to you. Right. I suppose I guess we'll see a try. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you and I'm telling you that I didn't do it. But you're looking at me and you're telling me that I did yeah, yeah, do it. Joel, you're getting right to the point. You, everything oh my you, God, that's Joel, what's making me mad, Everything man. you're saying is that's right up to a self-defense. That's what's making me mad. If you were defending right? yourself, tell me. Joel, if you were defending yourself, tell me that. Man, I didn't watch first four If days. you were you defending time, yourself, man. tell me that. Listen, man. Listen. This ain't going to listen, man. Okay. Listen, I'm detective. I apologize for wasting your time. You're not wasting my time. Because if you don't want to tell me. I asked Totio. Were you scared? Nice. Were you scared out there? Yeah, I was scared that night. Hell yeah, I was scared that night. Hell so yeah, would you feel you had when I seen yourself. when I seen they had all them guns? Hell yeah, I was scared that night. Hell yeah, I was scared that night. Hell the f yeah, I was scared. Yes, I was scared. So tell when me, I that, seen them guns. I was scared. That man. last five percent. Man, you want me to say I did something I didn't do? But I'm letting you know this is that I was. Did you scared. did you did you shoot at the truck down and take it to hit him? That's a different story. He said did I shoot at that truck. No, I did not. I'm 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 just I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. If you shot at the truck, to get them to get them out of there, that you hey, I'm Joel. You're quit messing with me. This get out of my area. That's murder, bro. That's still murder, Mr. Officer. But there's different circumstances. That's still murder, Mr. Different Officer. Different circumstances, Mr. Officer. I'm looking you in your if face you and I'm pulled, telling you that it was for me and I'm we have a dead body. Witness, man. It is murder, no matter how you look at it. All right. But there's different circumstances. All right. Is the way that the jurors will look at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding. If they can understand and put themselves in your shoes, painting that picture, mm -hmm. four against one, mm -hmm. and they go, they whips back at the truck. And I believe that. He left. This is told me that. He, he, left. Gets, he, he, left. Gets, he left. He left. He comes back. And he came back searching around the corner. He flew around the corner. I know that because other people that weren't involved told me that. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Other people also told me what transpired. Joel had a gun. And he shot at that truck. Mm -hmm. If that was self-defense, damn it, Joel, say it. If they were after you, my friend, if the, you felt threatened, if, they, if that doesn't, if that, I don't want you to say nothing if that didn't happen. But what this is going to happen, Joel, is that they're going to see all the circumstances that we see, and they're going to say, you're just cold-blooded. And that, that's the bottom line, Joel. That's the bottom line. This isn't a first 48 hour trick. This is facts. And the only reason why I'm here, like I said before, is I want to know that last 5%. What was going through Joel's mind? They pissed you off. They disrespected you. They came back in full force with four people there. They had guns. I wish my, it was nice talking to you, bro, but I swear I didn't do that. Okay. Good luck to you, my friend. All right? Mm -hmm. Good I'll luck to you. you. I'll see you in court. Okay. All right. Get you back in a minute. Sit tight. The detective tried to understand Joel's perspective, asking if he had felt scared or if he had acted in self-defense. However, Joel continued to deny involvement in the shooting and argued that there were different circumstances to consider. The detective cautioned Joel about how jurors might perceive the case and stressed the importance of understanding the consequences. Ultimately, Joel stood by his claim of innocence and the conversation ended with the detective expressing his hope that Joel would understand the gravity of the situation. Joel Miles, aged 31, has been sentenced to 15 years to life in prison for the murder of Anthony Pearson. In addition to the murder conviction, he received a 34-year prison term for one count of cocaine trafficking and two counts of possessing weapons as a convicted felon. These sentences were extended due to his use of a firearm in committing these crimes. Following a jury's guilty verdict last month, which found Miles responsible for the shooting death of Anthony Pearson in MacArthur Park in August 2017. While this guy might be a real gangster, check out the case in the next video where a guy pretends to be one. Number 2. Fake Gangster on April 6, 2018, Farmington police received a call reporting a disturbance in an empty lot. Upon their arrival at the scene, they discovered the lifeless body of Stephen Begay. 
A witness informed the police that two young men had fled the area on bicycles, providing descriptions of their clothing. Following a brief search of the vicinity, the police located an individual who closely matched the description given by the witness. The person appeared to be severely intoxicated, and his clothing was torn with minor cuts on his body. Based on this information, the police considered him a suspect and brought him in for questioning. That shit sucks right there, young man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm strong. I'm strong. Hey, hey. 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 Oh no, I can't mess up on that. Let me reset then. Okay. I don't like it. I don't I didn't know what that is. I didn't know what you were doing. Airhead! It's Airhead Tradition Navajo Nation. Okay. You guys here before me? Okay, let's see. I'm cool, I will. Alright. It's just I'm talking about. Well, somebody will be here to talk to you in a minute, okay? Damn, your fucking face all fucked up too, cuz. Alright, I'll be waiting. Can I draw? No. What if I do? Cuz it stop me, pin me down, shoot me? No, we're just gonna talk to you. Alright, well, I can draw then. You guys take away everything! Oh, okay. Might as well take away the chairs and everything then. Yeah, I took away everything, man. Just fucked up, fade, all of you guys. Is this locked? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it locked? Y'all check! Y'all check first! Y'all, it's locked! Oh, exactly! Oh! Lights off, man! So I want to go to sleep. I to take this too, cuz! What if I piss in here? Oh, y'all wouldn't like that. Exactly. I gotta take a piss, man. Do you want me to sit here and babysit him? Um, I know we got it. I gotta take this, that's it. You guys won't fucking take everything away from me. My ball lights off, you know. I ain't fucking first time. You wanna take a leap going? Come on. Yeah, I gotta take a leap. Where at? Right here. Alright, cool. Trustin displayed significant signs of intoxication as he awaited the detective's questioning. At this point, the police still had doubts about whether he was indeed the correct suspect as the witness had mentioned two individuals. After Trustin was returned to the interrogation room, his behavior continued to be erratic and uncontrollable. Come on out. You don't need to wash your hands, Bill. Keeping me dirty and shit. I thought you all fucking keep this shit clean. What's your fucking fading shit? Would I go back in here? Nasty as fuck. Keeping my dirty ass hands and shit. Damn y'all! Y'all fucking all no place as hell. Hurry up! I don't want to be waiting here all night. I just want to get this shit over with. Damn. Yeah, that's fucking crackers and shit running the government and shit. Got no respect for Native and shit. All you gotta do is jump us and pop us. Hurry up. I can hear y'all talking and shit. What's taking so long? Y'all was here, I was here before y'all was and shit, y'all trying to fucking take over my land and shit. Hurry the fuck up, I can hear y'all. Fuck's 
take us so long, man. Okay, might as well fucking lay down and shit. Oh. You alright? I'll take it forever and might as well lay down and shit. Alright. I'm gonna do some push ups while I'm in here, man. And after 30 minutes, the interrogation finally begins. Finally. Go up? take a seat for me, man. Hey, I'm, I'm Detective Smith of the Farmington Police Department. Okay. okay. Nice to meet you, Justin McGay. Nice to meet you, Justin. All right. So, before I talk with you too much further, I have to read your Miranda rights, okay? I have to read these to you just because I'm going to be talking to you about a case that I'm investigating. And I possibly think that you might be involved in it, okay? All for real? Yes, sir. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Do you, do you understand all of the rights? Yes, sir, sir, sir. Okay. Sir. And are you willing to talk with me? Yes, sir. Are you wanting any of these rights to be... I just want to call my dad. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. pretty much it at this point, okay? Yeah. Let me see what we can do and get you a phone, okay? Oh, it's gonna take forever okay. again. It's Give me a minute. Yeah. Actually, take a seat right over here for me. You think you can do that? Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> All right, I'll be right back with you guys, okay? Oh. Are they getting you some water? Yeah, he's in, um, okay. I gave him a cup. All right, sounds good. So, what's going on? Do you know? What'd you do? What'd I do? Yeah, why, why'd you do? I mean, what, I told him, just come back and stay sober, man. Yeah, I tried. Mm. You tried. Yeah, um, Trevor and, um, what was that other guy's name? I forgot. The British British me too, or something. Who? Trevor and I forgot the other guy's name. Why didn't you just come back, or why didn't you just stay with your mom like he said? Every time you guys wanted your mom, you guys run back over there. Then you guys say, oh, I don't want it down here. You guys come around right back. You guys, you should have stayed with me all along. I had everything for you, man. You were doing good. So what do I do now then? What do you do now? Well, you take care of what you did. You face the consequences. Oh, then. I thought you didn't give me a hand or anything, but alright then, let's go. Just take care of do what you had to do and... What is it? What do you know? What do you think's going on? You're, you're just gonna go to court and all that. For what? Stabbing that guy. I have to stab him. Well, who stabbed him then? It was that guy Trevor. Why did you tell him all that, that I stabbed him? Yeah. How about that video? What'd you do? Punch him over or what? Yeah, I just punched him over. Oh, damn, right there. And Trevor's all, I got your back, I got your back, man. Because he tried running off of my bike. That's why I punched him over. And Trevor's all, yeah. Then Trevor's the one who fucking gave him my back. I guess you fucking think different. You think that I still can stab him. I was just trying to get things. Well, we're going to figure that out. There's detectives know everything that they got. All kinds of stuff just to find out who really did it and who did it, who tell them the truth and all that. Yeah. You had me out, Pops. It's okay. It's another year, I guess. I would do this. You, I didn't rat you out. You're the one who's trying to fight me. They were already looking for you. They had the dogs and everything. You're the one who really said all that shit about the video and all that. I ain't the one who stabbed him. I ain't the one who did all that shit. All I did was Lay them out right there. So Trevor's wound is off. Oh, here, here, here. Recorded. Nah, I just want to end the video. The next thing you know, that's when Trevor is off. Let me see all this stuff. Detective Smith from the Farmington Police Department introduced himself to Justin. He proceeded to read Justin his Miranda rights due to an ongoing investigation. Justin expressed understanding and willingness to speak but wanted to call his father. The detective allowed Justin to contact his dad, hoping to elicit information about the case or a potential confession. Once Justin's father arrived, the detective directed him to take a seat. The conversation took a personal turn, 
with Justin's father expressing disappointment about Justin's actions and questioning his choices. Justin eventually admitted to punching the victim, clarifying that it wasn't a stabbing. The conversation shifted to the detectives working on solving the case and gathering evidence to determine the truth. Nope, nope, boy, you got to hold my knife. That's when you know she happened. I was just trying to take the blame for him, but I guess not. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why didn't you just stay sober and come to the house and stay there like I told you, man? Damn. Fine. Fine what? Go then. Somebody shanks me. You watch too much movies, man. It's all the damn music and videos and whatever you look at, man. Y'all trying to act gangster? He ain't no damn gangster. Okay. Man. I'm ready to meet my maker. Huh? I said I'm ready to meet my maker. I'm not ready, but I'm, I'm dying, man, because it's cirrhosis. I told you, I got I'm cirrhosis. Dying too. I'm dying too. I got cirrhosis in my kidneys right now. I got colitis, I got my chest pains, I got everything. The lean and the over the counter medicine, cough medicine, and the alcohol is doing my tummy. You ain't the only one I'm doing the same right now. It's a race right now. I'm gonna go talk to your mom about that. See if that's true. Yeah, go talk to her. Why do you think I got the inhaler and everything? Got that in my bag. I don't know what the cops do with it. Actually, I left that in your house. I have my inhaler at your house and everything. That's what they do. Look at that bag. Once, once they, uh, they contact the doctor <coughs> all that. I don't care. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cut it out. You keep saying that. Look what it's got in you. Yeah, right here and everything. And if I act crazy, all they're gonna do is pull out the Glock on me and shoot me. I'm ready, my mama maker. You ain't gonna do nothing for me. You don't give a crap about me. Cause you're all you do. See, why you keep saying that? I gave you a roof. I gave you food. I gave you clothing. Cause all you're doing is just yelling and putting. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just raising my voice against you. You wanna know what yelling is? Right now, that's what it is. Yelling is. A lot more louder than this. I don't like that. That's why I'm ready to make it all the feel. Why? Cool. Why do you keep saying that? I want to meet my maker. Because uh, all I'm feeling is hate from everybody, my mom and you and everybody. I just keep telling you I don't hate you, man. You're the one that keeps saying that to yourself. Nobody hates you. We're here for you, man. We try to help you. Then why are you ain't helping me now, everybody? Because I, because you guys think I did that crap, but it ain't really me. But so then, if it's Well, like I said, you know, they'll figure it out. They'll find out who really did it. Yeah, exactly. If you're telling me the truth, they'll find out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. We ain't gonna be here. You're just gonna be like, oh, let him go, like you did with my mom. I don't if know. I didn't give a shit about you when your mom lost you to the state, then when you guys went to the foster home, home who fought for you all that time? Then who got you back into your custody? I did. I was there for you when you were sick. I was there for you when you got in trouble in school. I didn't ask I was, to be born. I was there for you when you were getting picked on. I didn't ask to be born. I was just here because someone was horny one night. What's wrong with you, man? A lot of things. I'm a lunatic. I'm just ready to move my maker. I never asked for none of this. So what do you want me here for? Just, just, just to piss me off or what? I guess so, you can leave right now. Go ahead, go. I get wild with the cops and everything. I'll let them put two domes in my head. Huh? I said, I'll get wild with the cops. I'll let them put two domes in my head. Talk to me, bro. You know I can't hear. I said, I'm ready. You can go. I'll get wild. I'll let them put two domes in my head. Wanna well, know what they're gonna do when you get wild? They're gonna put a, a, a suit on you. Well, you can't even move. Then you'll have a mask on you. Well, you can't even spit. That's gonna be me. We're in the seventh world right now, anyways. Quit trying to act like, all crazy, man. Quit trying to act all gangster. You know what you did, right? I didn't do that. He said, that's why he said he's not. He wanted to chill with me at your house. Until later on tonight, just to go home. Oh, so why did you guys just stay there and chill? None of this would have happened. 
When you just first came back, when you got, took off from your mom, he wanted to pick back. up some bud. He wanted to pick up some bud. I wanted to get high. But next thing you know, it was a bad decision because that guy, he's all started tripping himself. He's like, that guy's throwing gang signs. And Trevor's all, what, 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 what? I was like, are you sure, Trevor? That's why I was just cruising right with how, 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 how do you claim yourself as a crypt? Just because you wear a blue bandana doesn't make you a crypt. I put on some work, you don't know me, Trevor. Don't call me cuz, I'm your dad, man. You know me, Pops. Why I'm trying to talk to you now, gangster. Why do you think you're you ain't no gangster, man? I'm trying to help you, I try to talk to you. Try. I try. You you could have listened. I think how would you find that job over it? Took you around. You had everything, man. You were about to graduate. You had a job. You had your girlfriend. Now it's all gone, huh? You know what? Blood pressure's high. Mm -hmm. Do you even care? Do you even care if something ever happened to me tonight? Do you even care if I wake up tomorrow? Because you wouldn't care if I wake up tomorrow. I do care. Why do you think I tried to, I told you to come back and chill? I tried it with them, it was just peer pressure. You should have been there. And you, you, you were saying, I'm a man, I'm a man, a man can fucking deny peer pressure. But you don't want to say I ain't, so why do you think I am? I'm just a little kid, you're just saying I ain't a man. You're saying I'm still a little bored, so why ain't you there? Why aren't you staying there? Why aren't you saying trust to stay in the house? How many times have I told you that? How many times have you just walked out? But you ain't never there to stop me. I did, I stopped you. You know I can't, I'm, I'm not as healthy and I can't move around as fast anymore. What's wrong with you, man? You should know that by now. I don't know. You want it all this time? No. <clears throat> I just want to become my chef, become my mechanic, Become I my technician, but all you do is always say something negative to put me down. You like that, always like that. I, I never said that. You always put, put words in my mouth. No, you always put words in my mouth. You're always saying crap. Nah, you're always, nah, pops, listen around. to me. Listen to me from my point of view. You're always saying that. Clean. What the fuck you always gotta do that for? You're always putting me down. You always got something negative to say. What do you wanna do? Just. Sleep, play game, watch, watch TV, and I was expect to the trailer to get clean by itself. I still, uh, every morning I waked up, I got ready, and I started cleaning this trailer before with the ice and June before that. I asked them for help, but no, you get mad at me. You and Elaine both get mad at me before you're telling them to clean. All you guys do is, you guys are all the same. All you guys do is sleep and expect the trailer to get clean by itself. I clean. You guys wait for Elaine to clean it. No, I cleaned that. When I stayed up there, I used to clean that. Every morning I wake up, I get ready. When you're told. I it. No, I wasn't told. I wasn't told when Elaine went off to work. When he used to drop her off is to work. What, is this what you want to argue about while you're in here right now? You want to go? Go ahead, go. I'm not going nowhere. Tell, tell, you, tell you tell me to go. Go. Really? I'll be gone. You really want me to go? I'll be with Uncle Chuck. Maybe I'll be in hell. Maybe one of them. And why do you guys do this? You know, I just lost lost my little brother. Yeah, I'll be meeting with him. You want to get your lawyer? Whatever you can do. Like I said, you can't do nothing right now because all I'm going to be doing is riding in John. I know how everything works. I'm gonna help you as much as I can, but there's just there's a limit to everything, son. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. You guys are good, and then you guys, you guys got teenagers, you know, you guys met the wrong people. Going in school and everything, that's what And that's you guys started acting gangster and whatnot, and I don't know, you guys started getting on pot and I don't know what else. All types of shit. Drinking, man. yeah. Then from there, you guys got us kicked out, you and Mooch. We moved to Grandma's. And there you met the wrong kind of friends again. I was falling into the bro, wrong crowd, huh? Yeah. I was, um, we were playing ball, right? Yeah. Who were you playing ball with? Uh, it was me, this guy named Cornelius, and um, these other two cats I met. They are just playing ball. Then this other guy named Levi White came up to us. 
You trusting, you trusting. But like, yeah, I'm trusting, what's up? So I'm Levi White, what's up? I was like, yeah, I know you, you're talking all that crap over Facebook all this time. I was like, so what's up? He was all buzzed out anyway, so I just pushed him, that's it. I just pushed him. And I was like, I was just, I was just pretending to stop on him. I was like, what's up? I'm talking all that crap. He was like, no, no, no. I started crying. Then Cornelius is like, get the f out of here. Just go rest up or somewhere. Then he started walking down to, um, uh, you know where the park's at? Then he goes to the dirt roads and then there's trailers and stuff. Yeah. He started walking over there. That's when he met that other guy. They were talking. I guess he was talking crap to him because he's all buzzed out and everything. He's probably still over there in Troy King Pass out somewhere right now. He was fucking all buzzed out, walked out, passed right there. This guy was right there. He was on the phone for a while. Like, he was still passed out right there. Then I still remember everything. He was passed out right there on his phone for a while. The next you know, he was blowing up and everything. He started throwing gang signs and everything. Started causing crap and everything while we we're still playing balls. What the heck? I was like, these are my homeboys. Like, I don't want to take no crap. This guy was like, he was coming on up to us. He was kind of buzzed too and everything. You know, you need to tell these detectives the whole truth, right? Everything. Don't lie about nothing and stuff. And just like the Bible says, the truth will get you out of trouble. All I want to do is just get out of here. Hate being places and government facilities. Like now, see, I'm gonna be brought in jail for the next couple of days until they get everything straightened out, right? Yeah. Once I go, it's like, <sighs> once I die, it's either heaven or hell, right? So I think I'm going to hell, so I just consider Lucifer as my dad. Because I don't want burning in the lake of fire. I want to be a demon. I know I ain't going to heaven. I know I'm going to be an angel. Why you talking like that, man? Trustin's attempt to maintain a tough gangster persona comes across as awkward and cringeworthy for any onlooker. His father, on the other hand, appears to be a compassionate man who is visibly distressed by the situation he's witnessing. Such a are you on something right now? Nothing at all. Oh, man. So you don't believe me, no one believes me. Huh? You don't believe me, no one believes me. Why do you keep saying that, man? Because I try to tell the truth, but you guys always think I'm lying. You're still going to find a way to pin it on me. Well, I don't know what to tell you. If you're telling the truth, they'll know. I mean, they'll figure it out. See, I'm trying they to got, tell the truth. They got ways of figuring stuff out. Yeah. <clears throat> Hodge. Hodge. I think they just got a knock on the door. That's why we're doing. I need some more water. You still want to talk to me anymore? I don't know, you done talk to me. I want to talk to you as long as possible, but I just want to go home, but I probably can't. I was thinking, I was looking at the everywhere, there's no cameras in the Because I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Are you? Well, I'm going to give you a hug. And then I'm gonna lock the door. And if you still want me to I'll be here, Pops. Love you, son. I love you, Tim Pops. I don't know why you did this. I don't know why you did this, kiddo. I love you, Pops. I always love you, man. Always, forever. Forever. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, Guess what they wanna do? So I had um I had the uh, they had the eraser and the blue marker right here. Uh -huh. I was just tagging all this up. But they took it all away from me. Is that? Yeah. Oh. Um. <coughs> I think we're good. All right. Just gonna knock on the door. Wanna knock on the door for you? Are you sure you want me to go now? Let's see if I got to. All right. Uh -huh. Ooh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting loose or anything. This ain't nothing. This is a stained old shirt. Okay. This is from um back in DZ. Old shirt, huh? Yeah. This is probably from Mooch. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Pops. 
Love you. Love you, son. See you always later. Always love you. Oh, I always will too. Trustin's behavior has indeed taken a bizarre turn, venturing into realms of religious fanaticism. Earlier, he had provided a detailed account of the events leading up to the incident, repeatedly insisting that he had not been the one to stab Stephen. However, his current demeanor suggests a detachment from reality and a fixation on religious ideas that are seemingly disconnected from the situation at hand. See you right now, that's what you guys are No, about. see, you're saying the same thing. Now you're doing the exact same thing that you're accusing me of doing. No, Trevor didn't stab him. You stabbed him. So straight back to the phone call. Pity. He's not trying to make you upset, man. That guy. Okay. That's what he's doing anyways. Bald head mo the, the reason he's asking you these things is because... She's asking the same questions in different words, dumbass mo**. Not, not all that. We've got... We've got a bunch of people saying that it was you. Exactly! Was See you. them! I don't know why y'all believe me then! Let me talk real quick. We had a bunch of people saying... It was a bunch of people. I said it was just my mom and dad and that guy Trevor. Let me spill it out real quick, okay? Remember how you said that there were several people at the park? Obviously those people got talked to by police. Okay? And they're pointing the finger at you. Mm -hmm. You got your parents who didn't see it. And we're both... We both agree on that, right? But your parents, your parents did say that when you came back, you said you were the one who did it. Okay? Okay. What he's trying to figure out is, does this guy have any remorse? What Detective Rock is trying to do is just figure out... Detective Rock. How this happened, why it happened, you know what I'm saying? We, we know the details, we know, you know, kind of how things work. Why are you guys asking questions then? Okay, I, there's little things that we don't, we don't understand, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of things like this. I didn't want I mean, to die, so, it's all in self-defense. I didn't want to die, I didn't want to die. When were you feeling like you were gonna die? When you started grabbing all the weapons after I seen how big that rock was, look at me. I understand it. He's a pretty good sized kid. I don't know how tall he was or anything, but I mean, I looking at him like, out there, I, I, he looks fairly decent size. He was pretty big, yeah, he was pretty big. Okay. What spurred you to that point? To, Alright, so being honest, get me out of here fast or you guys are just gonna lock me up forever then. Honesty is the way, right? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay. Tell me what you know. You already told me you knew I did all that. But I did it out of self defense. I did it out of self defense. Because look at me, look at him. He was a big old guy. He got, started grabbing weapons and everything. He grabbed that big old rock. I was afraid and cool. Once he gets me down, he's gonna go start smashing, get away every reference he can, start smashing me. So that's when I felt unsafe. So, so I said, Trevor, give me my bag, give me my bag. He started digging in there. I was like, let me see it. So that's when I pulled out of that. He was getting closer to me. And I didn't like that. That's when he started springing that branch. I was like, oh. So I did what I had to do because I thought I felt I was in a life and death situation. I know I was being a dick earlier. You already know what you know. You said I already did it, so might as well know lying, huh? So honestly, the best way. Sorry about lying. Yup, I did it. I appreciate it. Yup, I did it. I did it because I was in a life death situation. I felt like I was. It was either me or him, because he had all the weapons. He had a big old rock, and I was afraid mm -hmm. if I die, and so now if I die, if I fall in if and if I slip or anything, he's just gonna keep on going at me until. You guys found me. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying that this guy's bigger than you. He's picking up these weapons, rocks, and branches, and getting on you. You know, you 
call for your buddy to get you the knife and you know I mean it's it's sad that that's what you had to do to stop this guy but like you were saying if it wasn't you or I mean if it wasn't him it was you and then you'd be down there you know and we'd be looking over your body and he'd be in my chair right now yep yeah yeah Can we go a little bit We know you're not a bad person, man. We know that this is something that's hard to come forward. To say. Like I said, it was all for self-defense. Yeah. Um, we're going to take off for a second. We're going to try to figure out the water. I know. Can, can I get a blanket? I want to go to sleep. I'm tired. Okay, we'll, <coughs> we'll see if we got a blanket or anything like that. If not, we'll see if we can get you transported water. somewhere yeah. soon, okay? Please. And did you say water? Yes, oh, okay. Please we'll hurry. We'll work on the blanket and stuff too. Please hurry. Trustin initially attempts to deflect blame by claiming self-defense and pass the blame to Trevor. However, the detective skillfully points out inconsistencies in Trustin's account. The detective emphasizes the evidence which contradicts Trustin's self-defense claim, such as Trustin pursuing the victim Stephen after Stephen tried to flee. Trustin eventually succumbs to the pressure and confesses to the crime revealing that he acted out of fear for his life. As Trustin's confession unfolds, it becomes apparent that he was a 17-year-old at the time of the crime. The detective skillfully guides Trustin towards the truth, carefully reminding him of the potential consequences of his actions. Trustin's admission to the murder and his account of the circumstances provide a crucial breakthrough for the investigation ultimately leading to his sentencing to a youth detention center for voluntary manslaughter. If you enjoyed watching this interrogation video, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content.